We hope to discuss certain intimacy issues that are prohibited or in a grey area. And once again, I warn the viewers that explicit content in regard to intimacy is about to be discussed. And parents should make sure that children who are not in the age group to be exposed to such content not view this video. Number one on the list is intimacy with a menstruating wife. It is not permissible for a man to perform intercourse with his wife who is going through her menstrual periods. As our maker states in the Noble Quran in Surah Baqarah, verse number 222, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوهُنَّ حَتَّى يَطْهُرْنَ فَإِذَا تَطَهَّرْنَ فَأْتُوهُنَّ فَأْتُوهُنَّ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَمَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ التَّوَّابِينَ وَيُحِبُّ الْمُتَطَهِّرِينَ and they ask you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about menstruation. Say it is a painful thing. So keep away from your wives during menstruation and do not approach them until they are pure. And when they have purified themselves, then approach them from where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you. Indeed, Allah loves those who are constantly repentant and loves those who purify themselves. So it is understood that intercourse is prohibited when one's wife is menstruating. However, it is permissible for a man to sleep next to his menstruating wife. It is permissible for him to touch her, to kiss her, to caress her, to fondle her and so on. The next prohibited act is anal intercourse. It is a major sin and it is strongly prohibited in Islam as it is an unnatural act that does not fulfill any of the goals of marriage that we discussed in the previous episode. Other than degrading the status of a woman, it is the practice of those whose nature and train of thoughts has been distorted. It is a practice of those who prefer filth over good. It was the way of the people of the nation of the Prophet Lut alayhi salatu wasalam, whom Allah Azza wa Jal condemned and destroyed in a very overwhelming manner. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is reported to have said, and this particular narration has been recorded in the book of Imam al-Nasai rahimahullah, Inna Allah yanhaakum an ta'tun nisa'a fi adbarihim. Indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal forbids you from having intercourse with women in their rectums. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said, and the narration goes along the lines of these words, Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not even look at a man. Allahu Akbar. He will not even look at a man with mercy, the one who performs intercourse with his wife in her rectum. Finally, in regard to oral sex, oral sex refers to the use of the mouth for stimulating one's partner's private parts. There is no reference at all in the texts of Islam or in the sayings of our pious predecessors in regard to this act. And scholars mention that there are two possible reasons for this. Number one, this practice was not known to the early generations of Muslims and it only became widely known after the spread of pornography and vulgar material. Imam al-Albani rahimahullah was once asked in regard to it and he replied, we have not heard of anyone doing this except dogs. The second reason why this has not been mentioned is perhaps it was counted as a form of foreplay and Islam prohibits an individual from disclosing private secrets of sexual intimacy. So that may have been the reason for it not to be mentioned. So scholars have stated that we may conclude that technically oral sex is permissible but highly disliked for the following reasons. Number one, its ruling is not available from the Quran or the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number two, it is not known to have been practiced by the early righteous generations of Islam. But then again, there are some scholars who state that it can be practiced, it is permissible, as a form of foreplay but under a few conditions, such as number one, it should not replace normal intercourse. 
Number two, it should not be accompanied by swallowing the genital excretions of either one of the two spouses. You're not supposed to swallow it. As some of these liquids are najis, are impure, and these liquids should not come into one's mouth or one's clothing. The final condition is that it should not be practiced in excess as it causes infections to the private parts. And our deen, Islam, prohibits causing harm. Finally, as a closing note, it is greatly prohibited for a man to expose his wife's secrets, especially in matters of intimacy, such as birthmarks, reactions to certain intimate acts, and so on. Likewise, a woman is prohibited from exposing her intimacy secrets to other women. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our marriages and to bless our marriages and to bless all of us with beautiful, obedient children who will be a coolness to our eyes. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.